Hello everyone and welcome back to the next video in our section on uh, model selection. We have until now seen how the one norm induces sparsity, right? Because we get this peaky level sets and we saw that in many cases what you will find is that the smallest one norm point or the, the, the trade-off between a loss minimization and the one norm lies at the peak of such a uh, it's level set of the one norm, which then means that at least one weight is, is zero. And so this is the reason why the one norm induces sparsity. And this is why we often use it in training as a regularization term. All right. So what I've written here is the special case of the regression problem, right? So this is not a general loss function now, but let's consider linear regression with potentially a feature vector. So the Z may be a feature input vector, so dynamically system data lifted using a dictionary, for instance, and then multiplied by, by weights and then mapped to the output. And so if this is more than one column, we have a, a yes, this the W also becomes a matrix and so on, but the details don't really matter here. The issue is now that we have to minimize this. And what we did until now was always to say, in a minimum, the derivative has to be zero, right? So for the, the quadratic, so two norm, this was simply a convex function, meaning the derivative being zero leads us uh, directly to the optimum. And so the one norm is still a convex function as we can see here. And so if this is a strictly convex function, the sum will also be convex. So finding the zero gradient, which doesn't exist in this case, will also help us to solve this problem. And so the question is now what takes the place of the gradient if we cannot ensure differentiability at this point where, where at least one of the weights is zero, okay? And so what we need is a generalization of gradients. And so what I'm going to write now looks very technical and let's say a little scary in the beginning, but then we will use these two examples to make very clear what is meant by this, and then we are not going to go too deeply into the mathematical details, um, but this will help us in the end to solve the problem for this regression term plus an L1 norm, which is known as the lasso. All right, so what do we do? First of all, we need a name for what we are going to look for, and this is what we call sub-differentials. So this is just the name. So instead of the gradient, we can compute a sub-differential. And before we get there, we need one thing that we have to define, which is uh, denoted by omega, which we will say is the set of non-differentiable points, okay? Non-differentiable points. So this is easy enough, right? What you can see is for the one norm, so the absolute value in, in, in 1D, this point is omega. So your set omega is simply the set that contains the value zero, right? And so for a more general problem, you may have a loss function that looks like this for a single parameter. Clearly this point is non-differentiable and this one. So the set omega would consist of these two points. And so what you need to know now, the sub-differential is defined everywhere, but everywhere where we have a smooth function, it will simply coincide with the gradient. And only in these points, it is truly more than the gradient itself, okay? And so we are going to, um, oh, I've used the name sub-gradient now, sub-differential, I will talk about the difference in a second. Um, so first of all, I'm going to define what this is, okay? So the sub-differential is uh, what we're going to use the, this partial symbol for. So if we take the partial derivative, or no, the, the sub-differential of this loss function, what it means is, and now this one's really technical, but I will go into the details in a, in a second. So it's the convex hull of a set, and this is the convex hull of a set of all vectors psi 
u-dimensional. So let me just write it and then I will comment on this, for which there exists a sequence of weights that is in the differentiable part, so the real numbers without the non differentiable points, with the sequence wj converging to w, and the gradient of the loss function which exists as long as we're not in these non-differentiable points converges to this psi for j infinity. Okay, so this looks terribly technical but we can talk about this in, in a lot more detail. Um, so what this is, is a set of vectors which has the same size as the gradient itself, okay? Um, so you have, you know, take the loss function, take the derivative with respect to w, which is q-dimensional, so you get a vector in, in rq. And what we do now is we consider sequence, so this j is now not the index, but it's a sequence of weights that are all in the differentiable part, so maybe from the left or from the right. And, you know, the sequence of wj's converges towards the non-differentiable point w, or potentially non-differentiable point w, and the gradients that exist in the differentiable part converge to this psi value, but in the, in the limit, the gradient is not defined. So what this means is simply, and now let's look at this, um, the gradient of this, and then I hope this will become clearer. So, of the one norm, or so excuse me, in, in 1D it's simply the absolute value. And so it's a convex hull of all these elements, right? So what does this mean? So each of these psi is now what we call a subgradient. And all these subgradients then make up the subdifferential. Okay, so what if we look at a point that is somewhere here? So it's clearly differentiable. So let's say we can come from the left. We have a sequence of weights that converge to this point from the left, and the gradients converge. So the gradient always is minus one here. So in the limit, it's also minus one. And if you come from the right, you uh, decrease the w. So the gradient is always minus one. You converge to the point minus one. So in a differentiable point, wherever you come from, these gradient elements will all be minus one, okay? So wherever you are in the negative numbers, you're here, okay? And the same holds true for the positive numbers, right? If you converge to this value w from the left or from the right, the gradients that you have in the differentiable part will always be plus one from the left, plus one from the right. So the subdifferential consists of only plus one values here. But now we have this problem in this non-differentiable point, right? So if we converge to this point, right, in the omega itself, where the gradient is not defined, but we converge to this omega, or this point w as the zero, the element of this set omega, from the left we have a gradient of minus one, and if we converge to this point from the right, we have a gradient of plus one, right? So this is, let's say, the tangent, okay? So in this case, we take the convex hull of the left-hand gradient approximation, if you wish, and the right-hand gradient approximation. And so what you get is, this is the derivative if you come from the right, so the subgradient if you converge to this from the positive numbers, the sequence of positives going to zero, and this is going to be the subgradient if you converge to zero, zero here, for w's with negative values from the left. And as we take the convex hull, this becomes our sub-differential in the non-differentiable point. So wherever we have a differentiable function, it's simply the gradient, and wherever we have non-differentiable points, this will be actually a set, you know, defined by left-hand and right-hand gradients, if you wish. Um, okay, so this is the idea, and it actually makes sense, right? So you can consider everything 
in this lower point, um, a tangent like this might be a part of the derivative, a tangent like this, but also points like this, points like this, okay? And so really everything that has a slope between minus one and plus one is sort of a tangent in this point, okay? So this is why, why this actually makes sense, right? So every, and in particular, so this is what we call the definition of the Clark subdifferential. For convex functions, one can actually find another definition that says all, you know, if it's convex, all uh, tangents or, or lines that you can fit under your function uh, make up as a whole this subgrade. And so in this case, it's always all lines with slope between minus one, this one, and plus one, this one, all in between are subgradients, and then the convex hull of this is the subdifferential. And so this is actually very nice, uh, and we can now look at this a little bit more general setting. So again, the weight, and here now we are considering the subdifferential of this loss function. And so what you see is you know, here we have a negative gradient, and then this goes to our, what I intend is, let's say, because I want to make a point here, that this is not strictly zero, but maybe it just goes like this, and then there's a kink here, and then it goes on. So we have a negative gradient. If we go from the left, it's like this, and the, the negativity becomes less, you know, the, the, it's, it becomes less deeper. And then all of a sudden we have a kink and it becomes steeper again. So here we have a gradient that is steeper. No, it goes steeper than, than here. And then it increases until we have a derivative of zero here and again zero here. So something like this point is maybe this point, this point, exactly this point here, and so on. Right? So you can see then we have a positive slope until we are again at zero somewhere here, roughly. And then here we have the problem that we have a, a negative slope. And then if you come from the right, we have a positive slope of one, something like this, right? And so you see now that in these point where we have non-differentiabilities, we need to take the convex hull between the gradient from the left and from the right. <laughs> And so what we will find here is that this subdifferential is more than a single point in exactly these points where we are non-differentiable. Okay, so this is basically it, right? You have, it looks technical, but really you just have to look at the derivative from the left and from the right, and in higher dimension it becomes more general, obviously. But now we can ask ourselves, okay, what defines optimality? Okay, and so you see, Obviously, the zero still plays an important role, okay? No, whereas in differentiable points, we always said that the gradient has to be zero. Right? This is clear for a minimum, also for a maximum, but you know, necessarily the, for a minimum, the gradient has to be zero. This is now changed towards the statement that the zero has to be contained in the subdifferential, right? So you see here the subdifferential goes from minus one to plus one. The zero is contained, so clearly this is a minimizer of this function. And you have the same situation here, right? Here you have a negative gradient, a positive gradient, so the convex hull contains the zero, and you see that this kink really is a local minimum. Whereas here, and this is why corrected for this function, you have a negative slope, and then you have a more strong least, but still negative slope, so the convex hull does not contain the zero. And so clearly you see that this is not a minimum. So the condition that we have is that the zero has to be contained in the subdifferential of our function for w to be optimal. So here also w star. So in an optimal point, gradient is zero in the differentiable case. In the non-differentiable case, the zero has to be contained in the set that is the subdifferential. Okay, so this is it for this rather technical video, but we are going to need this actually because in the next video we are going to study the Lasso algorithm, which aims at solving precisely this problem. And for this we need this optimality condition. So thanks and stay tuned for the next video.